It has been a minute since I have sat down in front of this camera and filmed a video, so I thought that it would be a good way to get back in the swing of things to film a haul with y'all today. I haven't done this, I haven't done a haul in a long time, but I basically was in that mindset of, okay, it's the new year, I need to get out of my holiday roundups mindset and get back into like what's new, what's exciting me, and also that a thing I keep saying where it's like I don't know what I like anymore. And so a lot of this is me being a little bit more adventurous about trying things that I would typically have written off. And it is makeup and skincare. So I wanna share it with y'all and you can let me know your thoughts down below on like what you're excited to see next. Anything that I don't mention that you do actually wanna see from me, let me know. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so I'll start with this order that I did from Make Beauty because I, I can't be stopped. I'm on their PR list and this did come in PR and then I used it all the way up and then I bought it again because it's that good. And then I got Hannah hooked on it and Simri hooked on it when they were here <laughs> visiting last week. So this is the Hydroscape Moisturizing Reverse Emulsion. It is very much that like, you know, K-Beauty, super thin thing that like makes you look like a goddess and it's it got kind of an oil serum kind of texture to it that as you rub it it kind of locks on to your skin and you just feel this gorgeous hydrated barrier develop it's just great and it makes you look like a 20 year old being shot in natural lighting like all the instagram photos that are selling you things being like your skin can look like this it's like you know what? This product has become the thing lately that has made me not want to wear makeup because I'm like, why would I, why would I want to cover this up? Like I liked my face before I put makeup on more than a lot of makeup looks because of this. That should tell you a lot. Now, I probably should have listened to Hannah on this one because I decided to try the hibernation capsule from Make and I was like, okay, it's, you know, a, a slugging thing, right? And I like it, I do, but I don't feel like it's as hydrating as they say that it is. Like I would really like for something to be both more hydrating and more occlusive. I like that it's really thick and that you have to kind of work it into the skin in a nice way, but like, I don't know, the true test is like when I wake up in the morning and I wake up in the morning and like my skin looks fine, but it's not like a noticeable difference. It's not kicking my SkinCeuticals two for two out of bed. Do you know what I mean? Like, I think it's gonna be a really nice, heavy moisturizer that I can kind of like layer with other things, but I don't think that it is a hibernation capsule the way that they say that it is. Plus, I don't love the texture of it on my skin, like the way that it looks as much as I love this. And so putting it on the top of this, I'm like, well, but then where did my glow go? <laughs> I'm just like bratty about that. And then I went ahead and picked this up, the Serum Balm, just the regular Serum Balm, the original one in Halo Moon. And it's just a, you know, a clear lip balm basically. And I like this, but I don't think that it is an intensive, you know, actual skincare kind of product. It's just a clear lip gloss. And it's like a, you know, a liquid lip balm kind of clear lip gloss that I think I'm going to absolutely use. But like putting it next to the sink in my bathroom where I do my skincare as part of my ritual before I go to bed, I'm gonna go for a sleep mask. Like this is just not, it's not hitting the marks for me in that respect. Very, very pretty, but I, for me, it's just not a formula that I find particularly nourishing. This came in PR. Yes, this is like whoa, one of maybe like two or three things in here that I didn't buy with my own money, but I've been using this the last couple of nights and I like it so far. This is the Josie Marin Argan Pro Retinol Mega Moisture Face Cream. And it says brighten and reform power without peel because y'all know I'm a big fan of a chemical peel and anything that promises to give me those kinds of results, I am here for. What's cool about this is like the texture of it. Look at that, you have to like stick your, stick your fingernail in it and like pull it back out like that. IDK. I think that that's fascinating. And I like that this is crazy, crazy. Like you don't even notice it on the skin. It's so lightweight. I have a lot of steps in my routine and there's something really nice about something that has like no texture, <laughs> no smell, no nothing. You know, it's got a nice little bit of like a moisturizing cream feel to it, but you use so little of something like this. You, sh I mean, it, your, your experience is going to change markedly depending on how much of it you use that you use just like a pearl sized amount 
of a retinol usually and I just love that it integrates so well into my routine without pilling up or without just like overwhelming the amount of crap that's on my skin already. So yeah, I mean, gosh, this 1.7 fluid ounces, it's an enormous pot and everything that Josie Marin does is based with argan oil and my skin really likes argan oil. So I have been really, really enjoying this. I love that it's like very essentialist. It's very nice looking. It's a lot of product and it, you know, is a great strong retinol, but it's not trying to be fragrance. It's not trying to stain your skin off. It's not trying to be a bunch of bells and whistles of just like, oh, you know, put it on and then wash it off. And it's like an instant peel or something. It's just a good retinol. <laughs> I like that. I also still love my Neutrogena. <laughs> Like I still use that all the time. Like all these things are kind of in circulation for me because you're not supposed to use, you know, multiple, uh, it depends, right? You can use multiple actives in like one face routine, but you really have to be careful which ones like glycolic and uh, retinol are not supposed to be put on at the same time. And so I kind of do, you know, one at a time. So I've been using like a glycolic from this company called May Love that and then I've been using my Neutrogena and then I just started putting that one in there, which is kind of nice because it means I can like test a few things at once instead of having to like fully dedicate myself to, you know, one, like one active. And I feel like my skin likes it better too. Okay, this one came in PR like a week ago and it's a little premature to say this, but this is really awesome stuff. It's really, really fascinating and fun and I like it a lot. So this is the Fortuna Skin Biphase Moisturizing Oil. They sent me a bunch of a bunch of little ones, but this was the only full size that they sent me. And they also gave me a discount code. I had never even heard of this brand, but their stuff is pretty pricey, so a discount code is great. So I think my code is khaki15. I'll have to look, but I'll put it down below. And it's 15% off, which is fantastic. So yeah, for Tuna Skin, it's uh, I believe made all made in Italy, made in, yeah, Genova, Italy. Genova, Genova? It's a biphase, which is, this is my first real biphase product I've ever used. And so it like, you know, it combines, I guess, kind of like a water-based toner with an oil. And it smells, if you don't like the smell of pure anise extract, <laughs> It's not for you, but it does not linger at all. But I mean, it smells like, you know, floral and herbaceous licorice. Just as a last step, it's just the prettiest, most hydrating, gorgeous biphase oil. And it actually, I don't, I don't really want to say this because I don't know, but I feel like when I put it on my face, it kind of warms a little bit in a really nice way, like it's doing something. And I've been using it as, again, like I just kind of warm it in my hands and I just push it in my skin and it's, oh, it's so luxurious and my skin is just so happy for it. And I mean, you know, I just did a bunch of skincare on this hand, but like, it's just so happy. Like that skin just looks so much happier now. I like it very, very much. And what's cool about it is like, because it's that biphase, like if I get it on the palms of my hands and I wanna rinse it off, it rinses right off. So it's like a water soluble oil essentially, <laughs> science. And for that reason, I feel like, you know, it's much less likely to overwhelm like combination skin. So I thought that was neat. And I got y'all a discount code. No one says that anymore. I got y'all a discount code. The last PR thing I think that's in here is this. So this is a new instant makeup fix. It's their, the new set and refresh spray from Thrive. It has a smell. It's very clean and I can't put my finger on it. I want to say it smells kind of, I don't know whether it's the Ilia or the Charlotte Tilbury. And right now my senses are just, they're overwhelmed with licorice right now. But yeah, it says this is instantly lock in makeup with this lightweight oil-free setting and refreshing spray. I'm not sure what the actual finish is supposed to be like on it. If it's Thrive, it's probably going to be more combo skin friendly. They don't do a lot of dewy, dewy, dewy. It's just not something that they do. Their stuff is more about kind of the efficacy of making something long wearing. And so I think that this is probably going to be more or oriented to longevity of makeup and probably giving kind of a like a natural satin finish so I'll let y'all know on that but I really like the component it's really I, I don't know it's cool for Thrive I haven't seen something like this from them and I 15% off for them down below always have actually they just increased it from 10 to 15 so 
that's pretty cool. Okay, I made a massive order at Ulta, both at the drugstore section and in the luxury section. So I'm just gonna kind of pull and talk as we go. So I have this. This is the I Am Magic Natural Radiance Foundation from Juvia's Place. I haven't used a Juvia's Place product in a really long time, and there I don't even remember what it was. I don't even remember what it was, but there was some controversy about Juvia's Place back in ancient history, and for whatever reason, I got put off from it because of some people in my comments or something, and I was like, oh, people don't want me to talk about Juvia's Place. But like, it's a good, affordable, black-owned brand with a lot of options at Ulta. And I was like, that's something that belongs on my channel. It's supposed to be a natural radiance foundation. They put out two when this came out, and one is more oily skin friendly or just, you know, more kind of matte finish friendly, I think. And then this one is supposed to be more like, you know, radiant skin tint version, but it does apparently have a good bit of coverage. So I'm excited to try it just to like, see what the heck we're dealing with. It could be something where I accidentally stumble into something that's really great for someone else, or I accidentally stumble into something that I'm surprised that I love. So we'll see. All right, the next thing I picked up, I got this Too Faced Cloud Crush. I bought one of the Cloud Crush blushes. I just really like the packaging, to be honest. It looks like, you know, some kind of little Valentine's candy slash Polly Pocket. I just think it's adorable. And I got the shade Tequila Sunset. I think it's going to be quite nice. I'm really into, you know, the peachy coral of it all right now, especially going into spring. And I have been ordering a lot of blushes here and there, and I'm trying to make sure that they're not all the same color. But this is the one that I, you know, was like, all right, well, I want this one to be peach. It's a little, it's a little weird on opening though. Like I, I want this to like have a little bit more functionality than it does because you're kind of punching this little pokey part, the bottom of the heart. But either way, it's a really cute little compact and I'm psyched to try it. Because Too Faced, like, this is, that definitely falls squarely in the category of I would not have even batted an eye, not batted an eye. I wouldn't have looked at that twice, you know, a year ago. But I'm kind of to the point where I'm like, I, I like the packaging. And I like the, I think I'm gonna like the product inside. I obviously don't know what I like anymore, you know? So I'm gonna try it and see. And it might just be that I fall back in love with Too Faced, who knows? Another blush that I picked up, and I don't love Tarte's decisions with their packaging lately. Like this is just so, it's just so busy. It's so like unnecessarily busy and it doesn't look particularly luxurious. It feels luxurious, it's heavy. And I like the kind of decision to put like a clear, like, what would this be? Acrylic kind of thing that you look through on the top. But I feel like the rest of the decisions are a little bit cheap looking. So anyway, this is their Energy Blush, Amazonian Clay Skintuitive 12 Hour Blush. So when I saw Skintuitive, I know that that means, from their standpoint, you can see I've been using this, that that means that it's got the pH color adjuster in it. But thanks to some just really wise people in my comments, people who just know things, I had a commenter tell me a while back that the Dior Rosy Glow in 001 Pink also has a pH adjusting ingredient in it. Where is it? Y'all, we tore this room apart. So it's even, it's even harder for me to find what I think I'm looking for at any given moment right now because like I didn't do all of the moving of things which is way, way harder. Either way, the Dior Rosy Glow in 001 Pink do not adjust your televisions. This is the exact same color. And I had a, a strong feeling that it would be. And it has the, uh, like, you know, there's a lot of brands and companies that say that they have, you know, like a dupe for that shade. But the main thing about that one is that it has like a tiny, tiny amount of a pH adjusting ingredient to it. Not to the point that your skin is going to turn punch pink immediately because that's one of the biggest things that annoys me about pH ingredients, especially in lip colors, is because they adjust so strongly because your lips are like wet and warm, you know, versus a powder going on your cheeks on top of other things with less of the ingredient in it. It's just gonna kind of adapt a little bit and do what the pH ingredient is like purported to do in the first place. Instead of just turn the same color of like beet pink that it does on your lips usually. So yeah, using this side by side with the Dior, it's the exact same color. I don't think that there's that much to be gained between the two prices, you know? This is not a drugstore dupe, it is simply a duplicate, but 
it is a good little blush. I just had a feeling that this was going to be a really good duplicate of it, and it is. Okay, the other thing that I got that isn't drugstore from Ulta is this. I couldn't, I couldn't help myself. This is the new Unlocked lipstick from Hourglass, and I had to admit to myself that like my favorite lip gloss still probably to this day is the Hourglass uh, it's called Provoke. It's the Unreal lip gloss and it's just this like, it was the first really desaturated, almost gray lavender lip gloss I ever got. And to this day I put it on and I'm just like, God, I look so good in it. This is just so sexy. Oh my God, I'm Lisa Rinna. You know what I mean? And so I saw these lipsticks and I was like, yes, okay. Like these are going to be these beautiful desaturated nudes as well. It's a little bit pinker than I thought it was gonna be. I thought we were gonna have a little more courage on this one. So I got Tied, which is, I mean, yes, there are two, I can't remember the other name of it, but there were two that I could have chosen between for, you know, this crazy price tag that look very desaturated and like pale nude. I thought I chose the palest, desaturatedest, nudist, pale nude, but it's pretty darn pink still. Which, you know what that looks like to me? That looks like a wedding lipstick. Maybe this is my sign to do a, a wedding tutorial. Like that is a wedding lipstick for me. It reminds me a lot of Bobbi Brown Crush Lip Color in Buff, which is another one of those where I'm just like, is that too pink for me? Or do I typically just not go for pink because it's so on the nose and it's so pretty? It's so right squarely in the middle of pretty, but like pretty is what I would be going for on my wedding day. It makes it very different from other makeup looks. Like I'm going for like me, but pretty <laughs> on my wedding day. And like that looks like me, but pretty. So maybe this is my, this is my opportunity. But uh, yeah, I just found it to be a little bit surprising just on first on first blanche that it's just not anywhere near as maybe I'll pull provoke real quick. I'll let you know, I'll, I'll let y'all look at it. I think it's in a bag somewhere. You know, I like put it in a purse, but I pulled this instead. This is the Natasha Denona lip gloss from the My Dream collection because this is a very, very similar. And I just want y'all to see like the difference in what I'm talking about when I'm talking about like a very, and I mean the hourglass one is a lot more pigmented than this, so it'd be easier to see, but I'll try and pile it up. And you can just see the difference between like how this is so beige and this is so, and you see how it turns tawny on me, even though it's like purple in the tube, it turns tawny on me. And then this is just so pink. And if you spread that out, it's gonna get a little less pink. You know, it's gonna like start to adapt a little bit on my lips, but I was hoping for something a little bit more, a little bit closer to this. A little closer to Hourglass Provoke. Did gum it. Let's get into the, uh, the drugstore of it all, shall we? So I picked up a bunch of stuff to do basically a full face of drugstore, which I have on right now. So uh, you'll see it in the next video. And the first thing here is the CoverGirl Clean Invisible Powder, a big old, big old honking huge thing. It's supposed to be just a translucent powder. And I figured I'd give that a shot. It is, is that not just the most old fashioned looking package you've ever seen though? Drugstore, just, I mean, especially the fact that the prices just keep going up. They really can't do better than this on packaging. I'm such a princess about it, but truly, I had to admit to myself that it's not entirely about just like the product that's inside the package. I wish it were. I wish I were like that wise to be able to just be like, it's really only about like that formula, but it's not. It's about the entire experience of using it. And like, <laughs> I got a long way to go. <laughs> this is just as, just as light as, uh, either way. Either way, I'm a snob. Anyway, move, moving, moving right along. The dupe conversation is unavoidable when you're talking about the drugstore nowadays. Like, obviously, I have no idea what that would be duping. It's just a powder. But the, God, all of the stuff that's kind of going viral in TikTok right now, and therefore kind of trickling down to becoming popular and things that we want to talk about on YouTube or Instagram, it's all just, not just impersonations of products, formulas that are higher end, but they go so far as to do it to the packaging too. So this is the Sun Touchable Woe Glow SPF 30 from e.l.f. And you know, I think that it's probably trying to dupe the glow screen from e.l.f. I mean, from Super Goop. I actually, I ordered this straight from e.l.f. I did an order with e.l.f. as well. So you'll see that kind of intermixed. And that's actually not that it matters to you, but I got it straight from the e.l.f. website. I think it was because they didn't have this color in yet and I wanted it. So this is the e.l.f. lip lacquer 
in black cherry. That's what I'm wearing right now, although it's kind of wearing in a little bit, but I just, I, y'all, y'all saw me in my will I buy it? I did like a, what was it? Like a tepid takes, will I buy it kind of video. And like this color just mm, resonated with me, the shade did. And so I, I bought it pretty much immediately. It's $3, you know? So I literally had to bulk out my order on e.l.f. just to get that. Cause I'm not gonna like pay shipping on a $3 lip gloss. And then the other thing that I got from e.l.f. is this thing. I mean, who, like how, are you gonna make an order on e.l.f.? and not get this. So this is the Halo Glow Liquid Filter. It's very obviously supposed to be a dupe for the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter, a product that has never totally blown my mind in the first place, but it, it's interesting to see kind of their take on it, Elf's take on it, especially all the way down to the package. And obviously I am the last one to the party because this was already reviewed by everyone on the internet. I already got glowing reviews from people who love the original product from Charlotte Tilbury and then it all went out of stock, had to come back into stock. And then I got this one and I even got it in too deep of a shade because the lightest shade was sold out again. So they don't need my endorsement, but I got it anyway. I picked up a couple of blushes from Essence. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly Gooch, she gets me on the Essence. And like, to be honest, Essence is the essence of drugstore in that they really do have great formulas for the price and great formulas in general, like very, very good formulas. And what you're sacrificing on is just the wet and wild packaging of it all. And that's how they are like the least expensive at the drugstore. You know, I'm, I think these were like, I don't know, like four dollars or something they're neck and neck with like elf and wet and wild for you know the the cheapest ones at the drugstore but uh, like i don't feel like this is duping anything at least not from a packaging standpoint which hallelujah you know we have our own ideas like i'm here for it i think there's an entire community built around the conversations to be had around drugstore makeup in and of itself as its own freestanding product as like whether or not they're good, you know, it doesn't have to always be this derivative thing. So either way, uh, yeah, I got the shade Goldie Cassis and Shimmery Rose and the product is called the Pure Nude Baked Blush and I absolutely detest the packaging, but I think that's kind of the point. <laughs> and they do, they have this kind of like interesting shimmer finish to them, you know, very much like a Milani baked blush or something, but they go on really smoothly for that. And they're a little shimmerier, I think, than the Milani, but I, I really dig the colors. I'm glad that they went all the way towards like purple with these. But the main thing that I just immediately detected with these is I'm like, okay, between the actual shimmer in the formula and the ashiness of these colors, these are not for deep skin. Like they are at highlighters at best, but I mean, there's no way that's not looking chalky on like Audra, you know? <laughs> Would not recommend for deep skin. Wouldn't have known it till I got it in my hands, but at least those shades, no, I wouldn't do it. Oh God, and the last thing that I got is this. This is this new Milani thing, and I'm not gonna go off on a tirade here about duping and stuff because it's just, I will give you all of my thoughts in the video of where we're actually applying this, but this is the Lash Extensions Tubing Mascara, Mascara Tubular. It's very obvious that Milani wanted to make the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara from Thrive available at the drugstore for a drugstore price, and they did that. You'll have to wait for the video for my actual thoughts on the performance of it because I did, I did try it and I do have some thoughts. I feel like it's just a conversation that has to be had. Oh, that's right. These also came in PR. I forgot about that. So Kosa's, very excitingly, has extended their Undressed collection. The Undressed collection was a version, three shades I want to say, of their wet lip oils, which were in like more milky, muted colors, instead of being more like, you know, jelly, uh, translucent colors, basically. And they were very cool toned. Uh, and, and it was called unzipped, unhooked, and unbuttoned, I want to say. And unzipped is like, where is that one? I have it, I have it like, like right at hand. This is unzipped because it's just that like perfect, cool beige with a little tiny bit of shimmer to it. And the new ones, we have one that's very shimmery and this is called Exposed. 
Um, and it's like gonna give you almost like Y2K sparkle. It's kind of holographic. And I think that that's really, really cool. Like it's not just a clear lip gloss. I like it a lot. And then these two, I kind of want to put one on right now, but these aren't, they're not translucent. They are like non-glittery colors. So bare, I feel like, you know what I feel like this is? The Kosa Sport Pulse and the other ones, the two colored versions of the Kosa Sport like lip balms. They, you know, cause they have a clear and then they have two shades. I feel like that's what these are. There's like a cool and a warm basically and bare is warm and then uh, revealed is a little bit of a cooler pink. I think that this one's gonna go well with this like makeup look, but you'll see, I mean, it's cream. Like it's not even milky. It's a, it's, a, it's almost like a cream lip gloss, but it, they smell so good. They are actually nourishing. They have really, really great like nourishing ingredients. But do you see how that like changed the whole look? I wish it was a little bit neuter instead of being pink like that, but that's just, you know, it's, and it's adding three more shades to a line I already like. Some of them are bound to not be made specifically with me in mind, but like it's a color. You see what I mean? I'm, I don't know how, how many other ways to say that instead of being like a translucent thing with glitter in it. It's pretty, it's really pretty. So yeah, those I'm going to use in videos coming up. I just, I love this formula. It's a great formula. And they lowered the price. I think when they first came out, they were like $29 or something. And they're like $22 now. I did pick up this. In fact, I think that the Tarte stuff, I did all in an actual Tarte order directly from Tarte, which is kind of funny. I didn't realize, I think that they're in like Paramus or Secaucus or something because it came like the next day. So if y'all ever want me to order stuff from Tarte, it's a quick turnaround. So I got the sculpt tape. This is just one of the worst like designs I've ever seen. I don't know why it bugs me so much, but it just kind of looks like someone took the label off or it, or like a um, when you have a an image that's like a stock photo, but you didn't pay for it. And so it's got the watermarking all over it. That's what this package looks like to me. I couldn't figure out why it just like bugged me so much, but it looks like you didn't pay for the licensing. And so it's like all marked up. Anyway, this is supposed to be a dupe, which is hilarious that Tarte would make a uh, Charlotte Tilbury dupe. They're pretty much the same price, right? I don't know, maybe not. Either way, like they're both like prestige brands. We're not talking about drugstore pricing here, but this is the Double Duty Beauty Soft Bronze Wand. Twist and unlock, squeeze product, blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's very, very similar in concept and execution in effect to the, you know, bronzing wand, the contour wand from uh, Charlotte Tilbury. I haven't quite gotten my head around this yet because when you apply this like you apply the Charlotte Tilbury one you end up with way too much and so I'm kind of trying to figure out whether I like it more or less for that reason but we will try it together and decide together at some point for you know another get ready with me kind of thing but yeah I did get that and then there's been a brand that I have been wanting to try for so long, but they don't really come out with anything new. And so it was really hard for me to like make the decision to do it like now versus in the future in some ambiguous future, you know? And so I, one of my viewers, my skin trist was like, are you ever gonna do a Surratt review? And I was, I really value her input. And I was like, all right. This is my sign. That and like Tom loves Surratt and like I've just been hearing about Surratt more lately than I have been in like recent years and I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. I'm just going to buy some Surratt. So I got the Dewdrop Foundation in 1.5 happens to be an absolutely lovely match for me. I have already gotten a chance to use all of these things and, you know, getting my thoughts together on this. I do like the kind of, you know, minimal nature of all of it. I got this gorgeous little apricot blush palette with a little highlighter in it. So gorgeous. I like that very much. And then I built my own eyeshadow palette, which I did a really bad job at. I basically, I don't know how I did it, but I just made a Chanel quad. It's all charcoal. And like Hannah was swatching them and she was really excited about all of them. She was like, this is like my ideal palette. And I was like, let me review it. 
and then I'm gonna give it to you <laughs> because I can get some use out of these but like I just genuinely like I just wet the bed on picking these colors. I went with the descriptions of the names of the colors versus actually how they appeared and it made for a not super useful palette for me so I, I goofed up on that but you know you live and you learn as I'm surrounded by all of this makeup. I live and I learn and I just continue to. We just live, laugh, love. So anyway, I did that. There will be a review on Ciroc coming up. And, oh, this is the last thing that I got. I've been just dying to have another one of these and they came out with this. This is the Clinique Take the Day Off Charcoal Cleansing Balm. I love a cleansing balm. You know, woo, I didn't think when I opened it, it would just stare at me like that. I thought there would be something on top, but there isn't. There's no smell. And it is their typical take the day off cleansing balm and except it's just got charcoal in it. So it's black, <laughs> like my soul. You know, I have like in a pinch, I bought it because I was out and I was like at the drugstore and I used the um, Burt's Bees oil, the cleansing oil, and it works fine, but it is one of the worst packages. Like the pump jumps when you try and hit it, you can't hit it slowly. And so it just squirts everywhere and it, you obviously can't travel with it. There's no way, there's no like lid or anything to it. And so it's like, what am I supposed to do with this? So I just love a balm. And I love the Good Molecules one and I typically would buy the Good Molecules one, but they changed the formula. I don't like it as much. You go through it really fast. It just feels like a pot of coconut oil now. It doesn't feel waxy anymore. And I want it to kind of have to, I want to have to break it down with my fingers. And that one, it just, I mean, you just, every time you reach your finger in there, you end up with like a handful of it. And it's just like melting on your hands the whole time. And I'm just like, this isn't what I wanted, you know? So yeah, I went through my last pot of it so fast that I was like, this is just, I, I just didn't like the new formula. So either way, I went with this and we'll see how it goes. And I think that's everything for now. I think that that's everything for now, but like I just wanted to give you all a forecast of what you can look forward to. And also, especially with the, some of the skincare that I've been using lately, I'm like bursting at the seams to share it with y'all. That's how I feel about it. I'm just like, you have to hear about some of these like, you know, moisturizing, glowing, pretty products, especially because the Make Beauty one is $36. We're not talking about a $100 face product right now. It's just a great, beautiful product that is very well priced. So love that for us. I love when everything aligns. Plus it's gorgeous. It's glass, but it's chrome. I don't know. Just the whole thing. They get it. Make Beauty gets it. And they keep getting my money for that reason. All right, I'm going to stop being so emphatic about that. Anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this little haul. I hope it whetted your appetite. <laughs> I need to stop. I hope it whetted your appetite for some upcoming reviews and some upcoming get ready with me's. Let me know some like themes of the makeup looks that you might want to see me combine these products in. And again, stay tuned for the next video for a full face of drugstore stuff because I never do that. So thank y'all for watching. If you made it all the way to the end of the video and you're not yet subscribed, you probably should because you enjoyed this, right? And most of my videos are pretty similar to this. So, you know, it'll give you some more stuff to enjoy. And if you enjoyed it, please do make it official and give it a thumbs up because it really helps me in the algorithm. <laughs> and I will stick a video right here that I think that you will enjoy if you enjoyed this one. I love you all so much and I will hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.